So if you clicked on this video, you're probably in one of two camps. You're either a die-hard cold training enthusiast and you're just upset that I've made such a claim. Or maybe you are a person who never wants to take an ice bath ever and you're looking for that bit of evidence to take to those ice bathing friends of yours and say, look, you're killing yourself, man. <laughs> Both of you, before you comment, before you make any conclusions, you need to watch this because I've got some information to share with you that will hopefully add a lot more to your understanding and maybe change your mind. First of all, if you're new here, my name is Jesse Coomer. I am a breath worker, an author in the field of breath work. My books are A Practical Guide to Breath Work and my most recent book is Language of Breath. I also did author a ebook back in 2019. I updated it in 2020 and I'm coming out with the final version in this year, 2024, of A Practical Guide to Cold Training. And if you want to go to my website now, you can already, you can find these things. If you get my ebook, you'll get the free update whenever the new book comes out. This is something that I've been involved in since 2016 as a professional, and I was training in the cold and doing breath work and all these things for many years prior to my professional career. I've ice bathed thousands of people. I've been doing this a long time. And the thing that has happened over the course of all of these years is a lot like what happened to the nutrition industry. There is a big boom of interest and then there's a proliferation of two things. One is junk information. People just saying things and it sounds like it could be true and so people kind of spread it around and, it's, and it turns out that it's causing more harm than good. And then the one that is the most common is oversimplifying things. We have an unconscious desire to oversimplify everything and that is what has happened to cold training. And so I'm gonna de demystify some of this for you. So thank you for being here. Today, I am sipping on some Akinasia tea. This is something that I started to drink in the early 2000s. And actually, whenever people first introduced Akinasia to me, they introduced it as like the cure to the common cold and there was all this hoopla about it. It does have some research to show that there are some immune system benefits and things like that. There's some things that, especially if you have a cold, it can reduce the amount of inflammation in your sinuses and it can reduce some of the, the, um, the congestion. But just like cold training, we love to oversimplify things. So, okay, so I'm making a bold claim. Your cold training is likely making it so that you're getting sick more often. And I'm even gonna, I'm gonna take it one step further and say that if you cold train, especially early on in your cold training, career, but regardless, it's likely that you're taking more risks with getting colds and flus. And, and people are like, oh my God, he did it again. How dare you, sir? How dare you, sir? Are you not familiar with the science? Yes, I am familiar with the science. I get emails every day from people who hear about the benefits of cold training and they hear many of these oversimplified things like, you'll never get sick again. You know, especially when you combine it with a certain breathing technique and they'll hear all these things where, oh, hey, I'm not supposed to, this is supposed to make it so that I don't get sick anymore. This is supposed to improve my immune system. But I get emails all the time from people saying, I, every time I start doing cold training, I catch a cold. Why is it that every time I get into this thing that's supposed to be really healthy for me, I catch more colds, I get sick more often instead of less often. I also get people who they've had really a really good streak and they'll go for maybe a year. This was me. Uh, I started doing the Wim Hof method and I was convinced because of all the hoopla, hey, I'll never get sick again. I went a whole year without catching a cold, which was a big deal for me. And I'll never forget, I was talking to my parents. They're like, Jesse, you're doing all this cold stuff. Aren't you afraid you're gonna catch a, a cold? And I said, well, actually, you see, this, this makes it so that I don't catch colds anymore. And uh, you know, I really felt like I had found some kind of a secret. And I kid you not, just like the very next week, I caught a cold. So the first thing we need to cover is this, this concept that something is good for you. So we have, as human beings, a tendency to want to oversimplify things. 
And this is an actual thing that is in our DNA. So it's not just you, it's not just me, it's not just so-and-so. Everybody has this capacity and everybody has this tendency because it is an unconscious bias that is innate to the human organism. You have to understand that our ancestors benefited from oversimplifying things. If our ancestors would have really sat down and got into the complexity of hunting and gathering, <laughs> then we would have spent all of our time thinking and pondering rather than actually doing the things that led to our survival. And there are unconscious mechanisms that say that is the best way to survive. We need to find the simplest way to think about something and move forward. Now, I'm not saying that we need to overcomplicate things, but there are times when oversimplifying something leads to misunderstanding it. And one of the biggest things that people misunderstand about the cold or about exercise or about so many of these things that are very beneficial if done the right way is that these are stressful for your nervous system. This is something I cannot overstress that there are, that getting into the cold is a stressor. So many, uh, I, I see this online all the time, people saying, that they'll get into an ice bath or a cold shower and it will activate their parasympathetic nervous system. This is not true. When you get into the cold, your sympathetic nervous system, so very literally the same part of your nervous system that is in charge of all of the fight or flight mechanisms for your survival, that will activate. That is how we thermoregulate. Your hypothalamus picks up an extreme cold stimulus and it says this is potentially lethal and it's right. It is not wrong there. So many people get, they, they, they misunderstand this, including I've trained doctors and other physicians of many other types in the past. And they get this in their head that, that cold equals good. And that is not cold training in the same way. If, if you think about how exercise works, you go to the gym, you do your deadlifts, you do your curls for the girls or whatever you're going to do, right? You, you do the, the workout in the gym, but we all know that the actual growth, the reason why that stimulus is going to be beneficial for you in the long run is because you're going to provide a longer period of time for recovery. The stimulus to recovery time is in that ratio. The stimulus is relatively short compared to your recovery time. And it has to be that way for you to be able to benefit from that stimulus. There are times when you are actually under so much environmental stress, maybe there's other stressors in your life, when going to the gym or even getting into a cold shower or an ice bath might actually be adding more stress than what you can, what you can handle in a safe way. And you can actually overstress yourself. But wait a minute, cold training's good for me. I, I do this because it helps me relax, right? Well, in, in some ways, yes. But the, the reality is these are all stressors. And I see so many people adding so many stressors to their day and they think, well, these are, I'm doing these things because it makes me healthier. But they're not adding a whole lot more recovery time. In order to benefit from a stressor, you must focus on recovery time. If you are constantly trying to go after cold exposure, if you're chasing records, if you're trying to, to, to do things for your ego and you're trying to do things that you can, wow, I did 10 minutes in an ice bath. Are you doing it for your health at that point? We want to provide a stimulus and plenty of recovery. And it has to be that focus because what we're working with is the process of hormesis. And this is a process where if you don't provide any stimulus, you don't get any results. You actually get weaker. And we see that in the vast majority of society. But if you provide too much stimulus, you can cause injury or death. That is the cold stimulus, right? Not if you don't do anything, you, you, you atrophy. There are aspects of our physiology that actually expect this, this cold stressor. But if we, if we overstress, we're hurting ourselves way more than we're helping ourselves. So that in a nutshell is how we oversimplify this thing as good for you. So how is it that by cold training, I may actually cause myself more opportunity to get sick? The research conclusively shows 
there, there are two big factors as to why we get sick more in the winter time or in cold climates than whenever uh, it's warm. And no, it's not vitamin D. So another bit of junk information is that if you just take more vitamin D, you'll not get sick. And I've heard so many people, including you know people like Garrett Brecka and all these other people, oh, you know, it's, it's vitamin D. That's why we get sick less uh, in the summertime because we're all out in the sunshine all the time. In cold temperatures, the viruses that cause colds and flus are more robust. So the cold does make colds and flus stronger, and this is how they do it. Rhinoviruses and coronaviruses. So these are the viruses that are responsible for the vast majority of, of people catching a cold. They are what we call enveloped viruses. So what that means is there is a protective sheath that covers their genetic material and it protects that genetic material. So that whenever it's floating around or whenever it gets into your system, the protective sheath protects that, that genetic material long enough for, hopefully in its case, at least for the virus's case, hopefully the goal is so that it protects that genetic material long enough for it to replicate. When that envelope gets warm, so the warmer it gets, the more permeable it gets, the weaker it gets, the less likely it is to actually be able to protect that genetic material. And once that envelope is no longer able to protect the genetic material, that virus becomes inert. It can't replicate. It's no longer something that you have to worry about, okay? So, so often we're like, well, the cold doesn't make me uh, get sick, just simply feeling cold, agreed. That does not make you sick. But the cold does make the thing that makes you sick stronger. So it's more likely to survive. Now, here's the kicker. In addition to the cold making viruses more robust, the cold also reduces your ability to fight off viruses if it gets to certain levels. Okay, and let me explain. So when your core body temperature is reduced, interferon, which is normally the part of your immune system that interferes with the replication of viruses, it is less able to do that. So it's not as fast, it's not as robust in its response. So if you go out into the cold for just a few seconds, if you're being really responsible with your cold training and you're not pushing yourself too far, that's not affected. Yes, the viruses are stronger still, but the interferon is still doing what it's supposed to do because you're not pushing yourself too far in the cold. What I see so often, and what is going to happen, and it's happened to me a lot of times, what is going to happen, the more you interface with the cold, the more you use the cold stimulus, the more likely you're gonna have one of those days where you push yourself a little too hard, right? I didn't start injuring myself in the gym until I started going to the gym. I wanna make this clear. <laughs> think about this fitness is absolutely worth it exercise is absolutely worth it but when you exercise you are more likely to have an exercise related injury okay this is <laughs> this this should not be a big surprise i have hurt my shoulders multiple times i've hurt my knees i've hurt multiple joints and places in my body in the efforts to go and work out and be and be fit now, am I saying that I shouldn't go get fit in the gym because it raises the risk of injury? Of course not. What I am saying though, is that after you find this out the hard way, as I have, you learn how to be more responsible in the gym. You still go to the gym and the risk is still there, but you understand just exercising by itself is not necessarily good for you. Exercising the right way with proper form, understanding recovery, biomechanics, all those things, those are essential in actually making it so that in the long run, your fitness routine is worthwhile. It's the same with cold training. So many people, they look online, they see, you know, these, these people, they're, they're showing off how long they can stay in the cold and they see, you know, all this guru stuff about, oh, wow, look, look at all these amazing feats that I can do. And they get inspired to go out and do things that 
are beyond their training level. Now, wait a minute, you're saying, no, Jesse, wait a minute. I do this breathing technique and it makes it so that whenever I do the breathing technique and then I do the cold exposure, that's what makes it so that I never get sick. And my friends, I would love it if that were true. If there was actually a breathing technique that could kill a common cold, I would be so happy. I'm a breath worker, right? If I could go out and say, guess what? Here is this thing that was going to cure the common cold. I would put every doctor out of business. <laughs> it, would be, it would be so easy. But the reality is that it's just not true. Okay, there is no breathing technique. There is no combination that will make it so that your, your immune system doesn't pick up an intruder when you have an intruder. When you have intruders that are replicating rapidly, we have what's called the innate immune response that tries to put that to bed. It tries to put the kibosh on that replication. This is a healthy response. This is not something to begrudge. Yes, it sucks. I hate it too. But it is not something to say, oh, you must have a weak immune system if this happens to you. It's not a reason to say there's something wrong with you. And sadly enough, I get people emailing me all the time who are trying to get into breath work, cold exposure, all these things. They're getting sick and they're hearing all this junk stuff on the internet saying that it makes it so you never get sick again and all these things. And oh, it's not working for me. What's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? My friends, the, the likelihood that, that what you're doing wrong is, is, is that you're over extending yourself. You're pushing yourself too hard. That is actually probably the likelihood. You're pushing yourself too hard, too fast. You're not learning how to listen to the inner voice. This is something I talk about in my book. You're not learning how to listen to, in, in, in the language of breath, we would say the unconscious. You, some people would say you're not learning how to listen to your body. Do I still lead people in cold training? Of course I do. And do I still believe that cold training can be an incredibly helpful thing for so many reasons, for, for your immune system. I think for your psychology is, is the biggest benefit that I see it in. And I train first responders, I train CEOs, I train people from every different walk of life when it comes to how are we going to learn to deal with stress that happens in our, in our industry or in our career. I use cold training as, an, as, as a way to help them learn how to deal with that stressor but I'm not going out saying this is going to make it so that you don't catch the a cold anymore. I'm not going, I'm not even going out saying you're less likely to catch a cold if you do cold training. And that's, oh my God, how dare you, Jesse? But the reality is if, if you're allowing yourself to recover well, and if you're paying attention to the levels of stress that you're, you're having in each day and you're listening to your body, you can absolutely see an, an improvement in your overall health. Even if that were not the case, I would say that cold training is one of the best ways to deal with the psychological impact of stress, learning how to deal with it, face it, and even work with it. So guys, that is my take. That is this video. And I appreciate you sticking to the end with me. I'm gonna invite you now to go do some breath work with me. Breathwork is a fantastic modality. And so if you click, I think it's down here somewhere, we're gonna go do some breath work that is specifically something to help you chill out, feel good, and have a good rest of your day. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. You can take a look at some of the research to validate some of the stuff that I was saying today. And thank you so much for, for watching. I'll see you next time.